John Stigson, thank you for joining us from Geneva. We appreciate your time. But right now, we'd like to talk to you about the financial crisis that's sweeping Europe where you are and the rest of the developed world. Sustainability must surely be the last item on the agenda, given that business is facing such an uncertain future. We have to remember that sustainability is the combination of the economy, the environment and the social structure. And if the economic pillar is shaking, then it will have an impact. There will be uh, issues for those companies that need to um, refund their loans. Uh, uh, that will be more uh, difficult. So certainly these issues will have an impact. What I think we are going to see is a stronger drive uh, on efficiency coming out of, uh, of this. Companies will be looking at uh, their use of uh, materials, their use of energy and their overall efficiency and driving those efficiencies will be good for sustainability. So what will be the business context of sustainability from here on? We have uh, four what we call focus areas uh, for the World Business Council. Energy and climate uh, is one and that's where uh, at the moment, the biggest interest is for, for business. Uh, the second one we call development, and that's around trade, the developing countries, uh, the emergence of China and India, technology transfer, intellectual property rights, a whole set of other issues. Uh, the third focus area we call ecosystems, and that's about how do we integrate decision-making between the economy and the environment? How do we put a price on ecosystem services so we can take integrated decisions. And the fourth focus area uh, we call the business role, which is about what is the role of business in a society uh, which is resource and carbon constrained going forward. Bjorn, you're on record on your website, on your blogs, and through the many, many interviews that you've given on this topic, saying that technology or technology shifts will play a very big role in getting us to a sustainable future. Do you believe nuclear energy will be playing a bigger role? Yes, nu nuclear uh, will have to play a role, uh, and it is playing a role. Uh, you know, 17% of the world's electricity is generated uh, by nuclear today. And we haven't built many new nuclear plants, so they are aging. So we have, in the first instance, to replace uh, what we have, which is around 450 nuclear plants around the world. And then we have to increase the share of that. Uh, uh, and uh, that is very much also in the analysis made by the International Energy Agency in, in Paris. Uh, and the OECD is, is uh, saying the same uh, thing. So nuclear will play a role, but it's not the solution. How do you see the balance in that mix? Should it be viewed country by country, situation by situation? Uh, it, it is. Uh, it, it, the decisions on investments are country decisions, and uh, the energy mix are very different in different countries. Uh, I'm Swedish by origin. Sweden is generating all their electricity from hydro and nuclear. Uh, I live in, uh, in Switzerland with a lot of hydro. Uh, I'm very close to France, where we've got 70% nuclear. Uh, on the other hand, I'm an advisor to the Chinese government that is heavily dependent on, on coal. So it, uh, it's very different in different parts of the world. But if we look at the global situation, fossil fuels will continue to be the main fuel for a very long time for electricity generation. And then you will have a share of nuclear, you will have a share of hydro, renewables will grow, but it's still a small uh, portion of the overall energy mix. Fossil fuels are here to stay for a very long time and how long time they will stay depends partly on technology, what we can do to utilize them in a more clean way, like carbon capture and storage from uh, coal-fired power stations, for instance. Carbon emissions reduction targets have become quite a vexed issue for governments and business. How much disruption do you believe a 50% reduction in carbon emissions would cause? Would it, for example, cause as much trouble as the present financial meltdown? Well, first of all, let, let's remember that the 50% is not the European number. 50% is the number that the G8 have agreed to. Uh, at the G8 summit in July in Hokkaido, they confirmed their long-term ambition to reduce carbon emissions with 50%, including the United States. So that, that's a, 
a global number and it has become kind of a a a truth that this is where what we are aiming for and they've also then said that if we look at the minus 50 percent globally then the industrialized world will have to do more 60 to 80 percent as some governments have already said uh, both japan actually and and uh, some of the european governments and uh, if we are going to reduce carbon emissions with that kind of um, of number in 42 years time it will have very substantial impacts on society I I don't know what the society looks like that reduces carbon with 50 percent carbon emissions with 50 percent but it certainly will look different it won't look the same and it will be major impacts on lifestyles and consumption patterns and uh, uh, it